Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this video right off the bat, I'm just going to say it's going to be a rambly video. It's going to be whatever comes out of my mouth because I've spent days trying to put all of this information that I received in a download into context and like to show you guys what I mean. Like this is what I mean. I have spent days. This is only like a quarter of the notes I have written. There's a pile over here. Um, I've been trying to write things for you guys because I want to explain everything. It's like there's so much to explain and if I could put all this information out there, I feel like it could literally change the world. Like if I'm being honest, I feel like it could change people who suffer from health issues. Um, it could change our understanding of space and the way our planets are and just everything because what I pretty much understood, I mean, I kind of already knew, but this sort of really just, I don't know, it was like a home run understanding it. I don't know what the heck that term was, but um, our entire universe, like everything that is happening around you, all of it is just this pattern that's trying to show you who you really are. Like that is the everything the whole point of this entire universe is just like to remind you who you are it's like this whole game of remembering where you came from and everything I don't know how to explain this it's like the same pattern that's just like repeated in everything if yeah it's like the same pattern just repeated over and over like as in the human body I can find the exact same pattern that's in space um yeah there's a, a bunch more examples of this but I just, it's just like the same pattern, but like smaller and smaller context. So space is just like a very big example. Um, I'm not going to be able to fully explain it in this video. Like I've tried so many times, guys, and I just feel like nothing is coming out sounding the way I want it to sound. There's so much information in my brain. My logical mind just kept getting in the way. I've, I've tried to explain it. So this is just going to be a shorter video, maybe, um, of just me saying some of it, generalizing it really. But long story short, our planets are so perfectly organized. Um, I don't know if you guys can even see this, but we have the sun, which is the mind. You can think of the sun like a mind. We have mercury, which is the messenger, sends a signal from the mind, just like an, an electrical impulse in your body. We have Venus, which is the goddess of love. And you can think of Venus as being sort of like the, the energy of love in the body. And then we have Earth. Earth is representing neutrality. It's representing both masculine and feminine energy. Um, the center of Earth is like the feminine energy, okay? The sun in the Earth, like, there's a different relationship there. But yeah, just think of the center of the Earth as, like, the, the feminine, basically. It's like the heart of Earth is Earth's core. Uh, just like in your body, your heart is the moon basically as well. I don't know if that just made sense. I probably just confused you. Sorry. You also have a moon out here, which is kind of like, um, you could say like the mother energy and then earth is like the daughter. Um, same with the sun. The sun is like the father and then the earth, like part of the earth here is like the sun. So as in like, um, sorry, like a sun, like as in someone's sun. <laughs> Is this making sense? Okay, so this is what I mean by I cannot explain this stuff to you guys, I swear. Okay, the sun is like the father, all right? The moon is like the mother. Earth is like their child, all right? And earth is both masculine and feminine. So it's a son and a daughter together, both. And that is what's really frustrating about the way that also the Bible has been written and everything. They just call it the Holy Spirit when really the Holy Spirit is the mother and the daughter. Like, it's not just one thing. But anyways, that's beside the point. But okay, so the sun is the mind, sends a signal to earth, which is like you. You can think of yourself as being earth here. You're like the son and daughter of the sun and the moon. Um, and when earth gets this signal, this is you getting the signal, you can either decide to basically agree with the signal or disagree with the signal. And by the way, this signal is coming from the heart, which is actually inside of you. So these energies outside of you are sort of like your parents, but you are your own person. So it's kind of like you can either listen to the ego, which is like your parents here, 
Um, or you listen to your inner self, which is like your heart inside of you, which is the core of earth. So you have this opportunity to make a decision. So if you choose to agree with the decision, then it will immediately move forward. And basically what happens is that this signal that was sent from the heart to the mind gets absorbed by the mind, like consumed you can think of. This is where my black hole, white hole thing comes in. Gets consumed and then it gets pushed out immediately. So it's like immediately manifest basically is what you can think of or very quickly. And if that doesn't happen, if instead we choose Mars up here, which is the planet of sort of like destruction, like Venus is feminine, by the way, Mars is masculine. Um, Mars, any masculine energy is like more um, the mind, logic, and Venus would be like love, it would be emotion, things like that. Um, so anyways, if we choose the side of like disagreement here, we're choosing, um, basically logic over listening to our intuition. So let's say that we choose that. Then what happens is that signal, the energy that should have been consumed, absorbed by the mind and then pushed out instead gets sent back to the heart and now the heart, which is normally a neutral negative charge, has to deal with this extra energy being sent to it. So what happens is a process called um, hyperpolarization where basically it overshoots and now it ends up even more negative than before. Um, so it's basically like too much energy was given to whatever this thought was. So basically, I don't know if this is making sense. Venus over here, love, if love was chosen in your mind, so you have a desire come up or something and you choose love, which is to choose trust as well. It's to choose to believe in it, um, to choose that it's possible. This is either neutral energy or above that. So it's neutral or above. If you feel neutral or above about whatever it is that comes into your mind, then it would go this pathway. If you felt less than neutral or like negative about it, then it would go this pathway. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, the heart responds in both cases, but in the case of love, um, Venus here, your heart responds in a regular way, which could be called, um, depolarization, which is where, um, basically a channel opens and then you have, um, the cell for a moment becomes more positive inside and then more negative outside when normally the cell on the inside is more negative and it's more positive outside, which is the way that it naturally sits at. That's like neutral, um, but it swaps for just a minute. So basically for a short moment, um, you have an exchange between this is the hard part to explain an exchange between your mind and your heart. So your mind and your heart basically swap positions for a moment. Like that um, energy from the mind goes to the heart and then the heart sends it back to the mind. It's like a perfect exchange. Just think of it like that, okay? And a gate opens and then you have um, positive ions flooding into the, um, the cell for a moment, but then you have these other channels open to release uh, potassium ions so that it goes back to being negatively charged. So basically, it's it's like having equal energy that was sent from the heart and then equal energy that you sent back to it. It was like a perfect exchange of balanced energy, okay, back and forth. Versus Mars would be when the exchange of energy is not balanced. It would be when you are putting too much energy into a thought. So it would be like you're getting stuck on the thought or like something about it like really bothers you or something like that. There's some sort of reaction that's taking longer. And so what happens then is hyperpolarization. So it's when the heart then becomes even more negatively charged in response to the excess energy that's been sent to it. And then it has a sort of longer refractory period where it inhibits other action potentials that could be sent to it. So basically what that means in easier terms is it means that if you have other desires that come up or other things that, you know, the heart needs to respond to, it now can't respond to it. It's like the system is basically offline until that one thought or that one thing gets dealt with. That's like the way that I can explain it. I don't know if any of this makes sense to you guys. Like I will try and make another video on this. 
but okay so this is what happens and if it gets sent to the cycle with mars like i just talked about what happens in your body is that um the desire that you have or like the thing that the heart wants you to do um it won't go away so like that energy will stay in your body and basically cycle back and forth up and down so you can think of it like becoming gas and then going back down and becoming solid and then just repeating the cycle that's why you have asteroid belts at the end here between mars and jupiter and you have one at the end of pluto as well because it's representing fragmented pieces things that are not properly broken down um, so it kind of like sits in the body until you can properly deal with it, um, either release it. Uh, so the way that you get energy out of the body is release it through, you know, like emotion, like crying, um, anger, anything like that. And this is also why you experience emotion because what's happening is you're literally kind of like heating up that thing every time you think about it. And then every time you stop thinking about it, it cools back down. And then you just keep repeating that over and over. <laughs> pretty much um yeah that's the way that I explain it and that's also why you have thoughts that keep coming up in your mind like desires that won't go away because the heart keeps sending it back to you because it's something that you're meant to deal with and when you experience emotion as well it's the heart saying that there's something that needs to be dealt with there's something going on here if you're experiencing negative emotion it's kind of like the heart's communication system but the heart itself doesn't cause emotion it's the masculine energy the mind that causes emotion by not accepting what the heart has sent it because the heart the heart is basically um once again like you can think of it kind of like a moon in a way like the heart or earth you can think of sees the sun and then the sun sees earth okay so i don't know how to explain it um the the heart when the mind is not in the way like when there's not in a blockage in between the mind and the heart um the heart can see the mind clearly and the mind can see the heart clearly and the heart is like the future the heart has like way more information than the logical mind the logical mind can only see to the extent of logical knowledge it can't see past that it can't see new things versus the heart will see ahead of the mind it will see into basically the, what you could call the future and that's also why you have imagination it's sort of like previewing the next layer that will unfold in your experience um but the heart sees ahead so if the mind can see the heart the mind can understand what's coming up for it the mind can be more aware and this is what we call following your intuition so that's basically leaving the pathway open that's leaving a space in your mind for intuition to come in because the heart can send signals to the mind only when the mind is calm and when there's space for it to be sent if you're constantly thinking thoughts you're basically overriding this and you're not leaving any room for intuition to come in so you'll only be able to think to a certain level and that's it you won't be able to progress properly so that's why the heart in leaving space in your mind is so important i don't know if this is fully making sense to you guys at all the way i'm explaining it but it's so significant i wish it could explain it properly um but yeah the planets here are, are literally representing the human body the mind it's a perfect cycle of moving from imagination to um, solid object as well. So cycling up and down, we got water in the middle here, Neptune and Uranus are both like water-based planets. These ones are more gas-based. This one's the fastest moving planet would be Jupiter. Jupiter also has the eye on it basically, which is like a red storm, which is really interesting because it's kind of like representing the eye that's always watching you, judging you. And then we have Mars right here, which sort of would fit into this eye and it would kind of make sense. So I don't know. I just find that really funny how everything just works so perfectly. And in the body, it's the exact same thing. Like the heart, the way that the heart works in terms of depolarization and repolarization, it is just like that like it is opening this channel and closing this channel letting new stuff in pushing old stuff out just like the black hole in a white hole um 
And then we have hyperpolarization, which is an overshoot when there's too much energy. And this is also why I talk about neutral being so important because when your mind is neutral, um, it's like equal energy from the heart and the mind. You need your the energy from the heart and the mind to be equal. As in, you don't want more energy in the mind than in the heart. Like, if you have a desire for something, you want to give it as much energy as that desire coming in was given to you. <laughs> like, if you had a desire come up in you, all you need to do is just let it pass through, basically. Like, that is the amount of net energy needed. Like, there's really no energy that's needed that you have to give it because naturally it will just be accepted then. Like, if it just passes through, it'll be accepted. Like, I also don't know how to explain this, but this consciousness that moves in and out of you, like, it is extremely intelligent. So when you worry so much about, like, negative things manifesting or whatever like that's logic that's a logical mind getting in the way and trying to complicate things but this consciousness that comes in and out of you it's extremely smart and like it will not um want to flow in and out of you if you are someone who is extremely judgmental of yourself all the time who has a very harsh sort of internal environment like you will have less consciousness that wants to flow in and out of you so basically think of it's like you're making yourself more attractive to consciousness as in so making yourself more negatively charged which I know seems weird why would I want to be more negative but that's because the outside is more positive so if you can make yourself more negative it's like more things will be drawn to you because it's the positive energy energy that gets pushed out like you want to be more negative so that you attract this sort of like positive energy um and it's not being negative as in going around being negative it's it's being neutral is really what negative is it's being calm being relaxed and non-judgmental is the way that you start to attract more of this consciousness in and it starts to flow through you more quickly um yeah i don't know if this is making sense i had such good videos planned guys honestly that i was like gonna share and I had all this scientific stuff evidence and I was like I'm gonna make sure that everyone understands it like wrote so much I honestly think that it's just the general flow of the universe right now and the way that things are going because um we have an eclipse that just happened uh in Libra <laughs> um I know Libra is significant right now it's also my birthday in a few days so I don't know if it's an energy thing for a long time I've had um sort of like downloads about October being significant even though it is just my birthday month but October September were a significant months so I don't know what is happening right now but I have very much struggled with using my logical mind to explain things like I mean or maybe overusing it and that is the whole point is that we're moving out of we are moving out of um, the logical mind, by the way. That is something that's coming up. I guess I can try to explain this to you guys right now because we sort of talked about this, but in terms of putting energy into a thought that you're having, um, this is so important to not put too much energy. Think of um, your focus, like where you are looking, what you're observing is kind of like a laser. Like it's super intense energy, okay? So you don't want to be looking at something for too long. Like you don't want to be observing it for too long. And when you observe something, we know that it puts it back into particle form. So it can't move. It can't go where you want it to go. Like if you are observing something in your mind, it's in your mind. It's not out here like you want it to be. It's going to be in your mind. So that's why you want to let it go so that it can flow outwards from you. Um, if that makes sense. I gotta stop saying that, man. I say that way too often. Anyways, <laughs> I know I do. I get comments on it. Um, okay, up here, like when I have the black hole, white hole theory. So essentially, all you're doing as you move throughout life in general is you're just moving back and forth from a black hole to a white hole. That's it. Like that is your entire existence is just energy that is flowing back and forth between this. Um, the feminine is kind of like the black hole, white hole, and the masculine sort of like the energy that moves. 
um, back and forth. It's what causes the movement. So if you can exist at the point of singularity, I don't know if you can even see this, but I put like two lines beside it because what happens the more that you exist at neutral, point zero, you could say, at neutral, okay? Like I always talk about in the mind. This is what happens. When your mind is at neutral, you start to build up momentum because this little bit of energy, think of it as moving back and forth all the time, right? So when you're at neutral, you start to close the gap between the past and the future, as I always talk about in my videos. So this gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually you get this ball, think of this ball bouncing back and forth super, super fast. That is you and that's how fast you're able to manifest things basically because it goes to the one side of the black hole and it comes back out. So basically um, you have the, I don't know, you have the desire or whatever. Um, it comes from the heart and then you consume it and then you basically push it back out so i don't know i try to draw a little pac-man person to make it make more sense but basically all you're doing is moving this ball from like in front of you to behind you you're breaking pieces off of yourself and putting them in front of you for you to experience and then you're fusing them back together with you that's all you're doing you're breaking a piece off fusing it back together breaking a piece off fusing it back together that's all you're doing over and over and over because you're everything you're always going to be everything but to experience life, you have to like break yourself apart and then put yourself back together again and again to make it feel like you're having an experience. But that's all you're doing. You're just breaking yourself apart with nuclear fission and then putting yourself back together with nuclear fusion again and again and again. And um, yeah, you're, it's a cycle. Your past makes your future. Your future makes your past. It's just like the heart and the mind. It just they work together as one. Um, and then again, when I talked about what happens when you start putting too much energy into a thought, this is why I've been so against affirmations. I promise you, I understand this so well. You don't want to be doing affirmations <laughs> because all you do is you put too much energy in. So everything that happens on one side has to happen on the other side. So if you put too much energy into the thought, um, like the reality you want to experience, you're going to have to have equal energy put into like your current reality that you're living in. So um, basically it's going to take you longer to manifest whatever it is if you put more energy in. Think of it like you have to experience the bounce back of that energy. So like if you're putting a bunch of positive energy in, you need a negative balance that's going to balance that out equally. So you're going to experience negative energy probably. You're going to experience feeling negative emotions because you put in so much energy into this thought. The heart has to, like I said before, go through hyperpolarization and overshoot and then you're going to experience the bounce back from that. So literally what you're doing is you're pushing this thing that could have manifested right here at point zero because you didn't put a bunch of energy into it. You didn't push it away from you. But now because you're putting energy into it on one side, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, it's going to shoot back the other way. And now you're going to have it more in basically the future. So you're going to have to go through more experiences to get to your desire now. Like you have to experience more to get to your desire. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh my gosh, I'm saying that again. Honestly, I'm so annoying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just annoying myself more than anything. But yeah, you're pushing it further away. So this ball that could have been right here, you could have manifested that quickly. Now, because you're doing affirmations, you're going to have to experience the bounce back of however much energy you're putting into that thought. So you're going to have to wait for it to basically like um, slow back down again is what you have to wait for or speed back up. I don't know, whatever. But um, yeah, it's just going to get further and further apart when you're doing that. So it's a waste of time. All the energy you're putting into the thought is all the energy, like, you have to wait for it to calm back down again. Like, I don't know. It's just you're experiencing life more slowly. Like, you're manifesting things more slowly when you do affirmations. That's why they, they manifest when you're not affirming. Because it's, it's because you need less energy. You need the mind. Okay, like... The way I can describe this the best, like this is such a random video, um, is that you want to put equal energy into your current reality as the reality you want to experience. You want it to be perfectly balanced. So 
that's why they say accept your current reality and let go of this one because normally what we do is we put all of our focus on this reality we want to experience that we don't put any focus on the present moment. We don't put energy here right now. So think of like right now as being negative energy. Like this current moment is just neutral. It's just a flat line. It's negative energy. And then the thing you want to experience is this positive energy. So if you're putting so much positive energy in, you're going to have to experience a bounce back of negative energy to rebalance you again. So that is why you don't want to put too much into what you want. You want to put more into the present moment because then if you make yourself more negatively charged, which is actually what your heart is, your heart is naturally negatively charged. So it's not being negative emotionally. It's just having a neutral charge, which is the charge of your heart. So being neutral, if you can be that, then you become more attractive to everything that you want to manifest. It's like you become a better magnet for it because now it wants to stick to you because it's this positive energy and you're this neutral negative energy. So that's why being in the present moment, as things start to collapse around you, time and space, as like you be present, you collapse time and space, the past, the future become one, everything gets closer, you become a stronger magnet now because you're focused on the present and so your thing can manifest like immediately. <sighs> I hope that makes sense. But yeah, point of singularity, that's where you want to be. That's what you are, is the point of singularity. So, between the sun and the moon, you could say. Yeah. Um, and the more you live present, like, I promise you, I've experienced this. The momentum picks up. You start manifesting things, like, faster and faster and faster. Um, yeah, it has to do with the amount of energy also that you can hold. You can hold more energy. It's like, again, you're making yourself more negative so now you can attract more positive in at a time like you can attract more and more positive energy the more um you live in the present moment like the more things will want to stick to you basically <laughs> so this consciousness that comes in it will like you more because you're not judgmental because you're not constantly judging your thoughts all the time you're not disagreeing with everything um it will want to flow into your body because it is like a living thing i'm just saying it is like a living thing so yeah. Anyways, I'm going to end this video. Um, let me know what you thought, what your thoughts are about this video. Um, I'm going to do a members video after this where I just answer any questions that are below this video specifically on it because I know this was probably so much and so confusing and I also basically mentioned that we don't really manifest anything. It all just kind of comes from our heart and our intuition. So that might confuse some people because I haven't really talked about that before on this channel. It was sort of a point that I was kind of getting to and now I'm pretty positive about it. I just wanted to be sure before I change, before I shared it. Um, but yeah, our heart is extremely intelligent. It knows what's going to happen ahead of when it happens. That's why people can predict things um, because the more you become in tune with it, it's like the further you see ahead. Um, it's like your scope, your vision becomes larger. As you become more small and condensed in the present moment, it's like your vision then becomes larger because you're viewing from the small point outwards. So you become more knowledgeable about what it is, what's to come, and yeah, so... Anyways, uh, also wanted to say, sorry, at the end of this video, uh, we are moving into an era of feminine energy. I did talk about this before, but like I'm, it's very much happening. We are moving into a time where we will see intuition leading, the heart leading, and the logical mind will kind of take a backseat, and we might see this outwardly as well with more women in charge is all I will say. And this is not my own personal bias, this is just what's happening with the energy and I just made a TikTok video on it, so I may share that video here. Um, we'll see, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna end this now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for those who are members and also those who purchase coaching and who have waited for me all this time as I'm going through this. I promise you guys, I have been trying and trying for days to just like, I don't know, make videos and answer emails and stuff. I swear it's an energy thing. It's a weird thing going on right now where I just have had real trouble with being able to share what I want to say. But 
I think that we'll move out of it soon. I have a very good feeling about that, but those are all my <laughs> notes. And I don't know, I think I showed you guys this earlier, but my crazy board. I took so long to draw this brain and this heart too, man. Whatever, um, maybe I'll use it for another video. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys and I'll see you later, okay.